Okay, start. Okay. So uh, we'll be looking at uh, chapter seven, uh, data cleaning and uh, preparation. So uh, like, feel free to uh, get in if you have some some thoughts or something like this. Yeah. And... Okay. So I'll I'll also check uh, the the slides. I found the motivation part of the slides very useful. So the learning objective for the chapter is to know which tools to use for missing missing data, know how to filter out missing data, uh, understand methods to fill in missing values, know when and how to transform uh, data, also know how to use the certain NumPy functions to handle outliers uh, and do some uh, to promote promote do some permutations and uh, and take random samples. Also know how to uh, manipulate uh, strings. Of course, we will not do all this to, to today, but this is what the entire chapter covers. Also have some understanding of useful methods of uh, regular expressions and learn how, learn about some useful methods in pandas to explore strings. And finally, the, la the last part of the chapter looks at uh, how to handle categorical data. Yeah, so uh, the, the author starts by highlighting that almost um, uh, like 80% or more of uh, the data preparation has to do with uh, loading, cleaning, like data science work has to do with loading the data. And the, the last chapter was on loading the data and then also cleaning the data, transforming and rearranging. So this chapter looks at the, the 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 cleaning part, how to deal with missing missing values, um, and how to also do some transformations and possibly some rearrangement uh, of the data. So uh, fortunately, pandas, along with uh, built-in Python language features, provide uh, us with a high-level, uh, flexible, and fast set of tools to enable you to manipulate uh, data into the right form. So basically, most of the time when we have data, it's not readily available for analysis. So as such, it has to be to be clean. Um, and so this chapter, it's like a primer, like a, it's a, a foundation on how to deal with issues like this. So the chapter discuss tools for missing data, that is uh, NA, and how, how do we deal with duplicates, also string manipulation, and other analytical data transformation. So the first part, we start with uh, missing data. So uh, missing data is uh, is always part of data. You you, you always have uh, some part of the data that is, that is missing. It could be that one of the goal of Pandas is to make working with missing data as painless as possible. Uh, so for example, all of the descriptive statistics on Pandas uh, objects exclude uh, missing data by default, so which uh, which uh, makes it very easy to deal with missing data. So it that that doesn't mean that uh, pandas uh, deals with uh, missing data completely. Uh, for data with float type, like uh, um, data with float type, pandas uses the float point value, the the NAN not a number, this is also similar to what R uses to represent uh, missing data. Uh, also missing data are usually called uh, sentinel values. They are also called sentinel values. So this is a uh, an example where we have uh, a missing value here. And yeah, so if we call the is any uh, uh, function, it, it returns a boolean which says, uh, which uh, returns a boolean of false if it's is actual value and true when it's a it's a NA. So pandas also uh, it adopts the approach just like in R to represent missing values with NA. Uh, and uh, in statistics uh, statistics applications, any data may either be uh, data that doesn't exist or that exists but was not observed. 
uh, two problems of data uh, collection, for example. So when we are cleaning the data, we have to decide on how to deal with this. Is either we are going to uh, replace it with another value or completely remove it from the from the data set or, or something like this. Yeah, if, if you have any stuff you wanna add on, on this part. So built-in Python non-value is also uh, created as an init. So this non uh, type, it's, it, it seems unique to uh, Python because I'm not sure if R has this non thing. Uh, I'm not sure of that. So uh, this non is also a, a type of a any. So this is an example. We have uh, a typical any and also a non type. Um, so if we call the method is uh, any, like if we want to know is an any, it returns true for both the the NAN and for the non, which is like both of them are uh, uh, every Python stores uh, missing, missing values. Yeah, so yeah, if, if you wanna add anything, you feel free to interrupt. So he's still repeating that Pandas project has attempted to make working with missing data consistent across uh, data types. Uh, so, so the functions like uh, pandas dot is any abstract uh, away many of the annoying details. So it just gives you what you want. It just returns uh, a, a true or false, a true if it's uh, any uh, and a false if it's not. So any handling object method. So these are some of the methods that we might want to use to deal with any. That is the drop, the drop method, which uh, it, it, it filters access label based on whether values for each uh, level have missing missing data with uh, varying thresholds uh, for how much missing data to tolerate and the the, the, the fill in it sort of uh, uh, fill in missing data with some value or uh, using an interpolation method um, such as uh, uh, like the forward fill or the, the back fill uh, is any it's uh, returns a, a boolean like a true or false value indicating which values uh, are missing or any not any so it's not ne any negate is the negation of uh, is any it turns true for uh, a non any value and false for uh, any values so filtering out uh, uh, the missing data so we can do that using either the drop method or the not any method. Basically, they all give you the same uh, results. And he doesn't mention that there should be pref we should prefer one over the other because they, they all do the same thing sort of. It, it drops the any, it, uh, not any also sort of removes the, uh, the, the any from the, the data. So, uh, but uh, so when we are dealing with uh, data analysis, we don't want to drop the entire row or the entire column. So the drop, uh, the drop uh, uh, method. Uh, so with data frame objects, there are different ways to remove the, the missing data. Uh, you may want to drop rows or columns uh, that are all any, or only those rows or columns that contain any any. So the drop by default drops any row containing a missing value. So this is uh, not what we, we might want because we might want to just drop the specific uh, missing value and keep the other entries in the row. But the, the, def the default for drop is it, it, it drops the entire row, which uh, might not be convenient depending on the type of data we are working with. And uh, so this is a, a clear example. If we call the drop method, it, it basically drops all the rows that have any, uh, which, uh, uh, hardly you you will want to do that when you are cleaning the data. So then then we, then we have to change the default setting and uh, yes, uh, say uh, set how to all. So when we set how to all, it drops only the rows that you know all of them are, are in it. It drops that and keep the rest. So 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 he's still reminding us that. Let's keep in mind that. Uh, this function returns a new object by default and do not modify the content. So it's like it's it's it 
it returns a copy of the the the, the original data frame. So we can uh, also the, the the previous example was with rows. We can also do the same thing with columns by just uh, specifying axis equals to column, and then uh, we could uh, drop columns that you know all the entries in that column are, are in it. And we could also set, set a trash pool where we say, okay, if uh, uh, a particular column um, has, uh, let's say, the, the trash pool could be any number, it has two or more, just uh, sort of two or more NS, then, then two or less NS, then drop uh, those, those, those rows or columns, something like this. So like, uh, here we set a threshold for two, and then it uh, uh, so basically it drops the uh, the column that has more than two uh, in it. it. It just removes it. No. Uh, so if it set the threshold by two, it so it it drops the the columns that have uh, NAs of exactly two. Yeah. At least it drops like two 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 NS. Yeah, sorry, sorry for the explanation. It drops like two NS because of the threshold we have set. So if we had set one, it will just drop one one of the NS and, and that's it. If we set three, it will drop like uh, three of the NS and, and, and leave the rest. So basically the threshold is uh, sort of the limit to how much uh, NS we want to drop. Uh, so filling in the, the, the missing data, so we could also uh, use the field method to, instead of dropping the, the NA, we could just call the field method and then um, the, the constant we uh, put in the, in the, in the bracket in the, in the bracket will replace the, the field method will replace the NAs with that, uh, that, that constant. So uh, in the data frame example, um, so it will replace all these NAs with, uh, with zero because we have filled, we specified the constant for zero here. So this in is are uh, all uh, uh, replaced by zero. These are all replaced by zero. So we can also use the dictionary to call the field, uh, um, the, the field method, wherein we could have uh, different in is, the different columns, we assign uh, different constants to different columns. So here in the, the second column, we assign the constant 0 0.5. And in the third column, we assign the constant 0. And then it replaces the NS in the second column with uh, 0 0.5. And then the NS in the third column with uh, 0 0.2. So, uh, so we could use also this field NA to do some kind of a re-indexing. Um, so where we have, let's say if we generate a random uh, standard normal uh, with uh, six rows and, and, and three columns. And then we do some, we assign the uh, these values using the I lock to, to NS, we assign them to uh, the NS. So the, the second column from the third entry towards the end, we assign that to an NA. And also, in the third column, from the fourth entry to the end, we uh, make that an any. So we could use the the forward field method, but if we use the forward field method, it it, it fills uh, all the rest with the, the 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 last entry. Like here, it fills all these NAs with this entry, all these other NAs, and this one it fills all these other NAs with this entry, which is not actually what we want. So if we set the limit. To two, it just fills the next two entries. It just fills the next two entries. Yeah. Yeah. So if if you have anything to add or or comment, uh, feel free. Yeah, I I think these uh, uh methods are quite useful. So the 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 this table gives uh, the fill any function arguments. So the value it's a, a a scalar or a dictionary. Yeah, a dictionary like object 
to use to, to fill the mission values, the method. Uh, it, it, it does some interpolations, but it, it ha he hasn't mentioned about this method where we could use the B field, which will do the backward filling and the F field, which will do the, the forward filling, but the default is none. Uh, the the axis could be either the index, which is the row or the or the column, but usually the default is always the index. The default is always the the row the row axis, and the limit we uh, for forward and backward filling, uh, uh, maximum number of consecutive uh, periods to fill. Yeah, so that's the the limit. So that's the first part of the 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 the, the chapter, which looks at uh, how to deal with missing data. The, the second part looks at uh, transforming data. So, uh, so so basically the idea is when we have the raw data, first we try to clean it, remove uh, uh, um, uh, unwanted values, let's say missing values. So we remove missing values and and, and change some, some values. And then once we have the, the rows and columns, uh, with the actual uh, values we want, we might want to do some transformations. So this part looks at uh, the type of transformations that we might want to do. First, we might want to check for for duplicates. So we, because you might have some entries duplicated, this could be due to data entry um, um, errors or due to some some other. Um, issues with the data. So we, we want to check that. So we have a, a sample data frame. So we could see here clearly that uh, the, there is a duplicate here. We could see that. So we could use the, the duplicated uh, method, which returns a, a Boolean to indicate false, if not duplicate, and true, and by the duplicate. So we could see here it indicated that it's uh, duplicated. The, 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 the the sixth uh, entry is a uh, is a duplicate. So so we could use the drop duplicates, and then but the drop duplicates by default it, it drops the second entry, it drops the second entry by def default. So we could change that default uh, uh, setting. So we could also. Uh, specify some subsets and do uh, 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 and drop that subset of the the data frame. Um, so like here, we could uh, drop the duplicates in the subset uh, of the the column K of the, the the data the data frame. In in which case, it will consider all this as duplicates. Even though these are uh, uh, separate entries, uh, like in the data points in the data set, but uh, because we are treating this column as a subset, and then we are like drop the duplicates in this column from this uh, data frame. So it just considers all these other entries, all these other one, two entries as, as duplicates. So like like I mentioned, so the, the duplicated and the drop duplicates by default, they keep the, the first value and drop the, the preceding, the subsequent value. So, but if we pass this keep plus, it will return the, the last, it will return the last entry instead of keeping the first entry. Like here, if we call the data, previously it, uh, when we call the duplicate, it, dro it dropped the last entry. But when we call the keep last, it dropped this and keep the last entry. Yes. I came. I I still I still around. Yeah, I'm following you. Okay, okay. I, am I? I don't know whether I'm making some sense. No, it makes sense. So, okay, so okay. yeah, it's uh, every it's every explanation and the contents in the book is uh yeah, yeah very I straightforward. Think it, yeah, so yeah, you yeah, just it, go yeah. ahead and keep going. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, it seems very straightforward. This the this stuff seems very simple. So the transforming yeah. data using uh, yeah okay. Yeah. Yeah. So transforming data using a, a function or a map. So we could also do a transformation of the data. We might use uh, uh, some some functions to do some basic transformations. 
or we could call the map method also, uh, which uh, could also help us do some calculations as we wish. So we have this uh, hypothetical case where we, wherein we have food and then the 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 ants. Let's say how how much the 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 how much of how much ants are in this uh, various food types. So we have the uh, the bacon has 4.0 ounce, uh, the pool pork 3.4 ounce, and and etc. Suppose we want to add a column indicating the type of animal that each food came from. We could we could call the the mapping method. We could call the mapping method. So we could meet to animal. We could uh, define uh, 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 yeah we could define some type of a, a dictionary. So, yeah, some kind of a dictionary where we we, we attach uh, each uh, meat to the, the 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 animal it is it is from. Yeah, some something like this. So the the math method uh, on a series um, accepts a, a a function or a dictionary like object containing a mapping to do the transformation value. So here now we have defined this. Uh, uh, dictionary like object this is uh, like similar to a dictionary but it's not actually a dictionary right? but for this it's like a dictionary like uh, stuff so since we have this uh, meat to animal so we've done the the mapping like this uh, uh, bacon is from pig uh, uh, pastrami is from cow and and, and etc so now the data uh, the, now we can call the data and uh, say animals is equals to the data food and then we map it to to this so we map it to this now it creates a new column called the animal column so now this creates a, an animal column wherein each uh, animal uh, the animal column indicates where from which animal the food is it's, it's being produced. So similarly, he's trying to explain that using this mapping method, we could use a function to achieve the same goal, wherein we could define this function as get animal, and then it returns meet to animal, which which seems very straightforward compared to going through all this. The fun, using the function method seems very straightforward, and yeah, but they all do the same thing, sir. So using math is uh, a convenient way to perform element-wise uh, transformations and other data cleaning um, related uh, operations. Cool. So we could also replace values because we could have certain values that you know uh, they are not right or they are not in the form that we want them to be. So we could uh, easily replace them. Um, here is an example. Uh, normally, you have certain data sets where in, uh, they usually code missing values with some very strange numbers like minus 888. You also have minus 999. So this are usually code they give to missing values. So, so suppose we have this series. And let's, let's assume that uh, minus 999 is a sentinel, sentinel value, like it's a missing value. And if we don't specify to... Uh, uh, specify to pandas that this is a, a missing value. It will just treat it as a as a normal value, which is not the case. So we could use we could use the replace method uh, minus ninety nine minus nine 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 uh, um, to uh, replace it to an an any. But this is just if we want to replace one value. If we want to replace multiple values, we could use this approach. We could use this uh, approach, but we are replacing all these values to a particular, replacing them by an any. So if we want to replace each of them with a separate value, we could use uh, this approach instead. We are in the, the minus 999 will be an any, and the 1,000 will be replaced to zero. So this is quite useful because when you are doing data uh, cleaning, you might want to replace certain values. So this is quite uh, a useful. So the, 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 the argument could also be a dictionary, sure. 
could be a dictionary, which, uh, you know, so it could be, a, we could decide to use this format or just put it in a dictionary. So it's like Python dictionaries are very flexible and they're used, like very useful because you could easily uh, pass many different data types to a dictionary. So he's like making a note that the data dot replace method is distinct from the data dot str replace, which performs element wise string substitutions. So he will he said we'll look at this later in the in the chapters. I'm not sure if we'll be able to do that in this uh, today. So we could also name the rename the access indexes. We could uh, rename them. Um, so so like. Uh, Values in a series, access levels can be similarly transformed by a function or using the mapping, uh, or, or using mapping of some form to produce new, uh, differently labeled objects. You could also modify the access in place without creating a new data. So you you do that if you use the rename, um, like the rename method. But if you use the mapping method, it sort of creates like. A, it, it modifies the original data. And this he will explain. So it gives an example where we have the indexes, which are the the the, the rules. The, they are the, the, they are the various states. We have Ohio, Colorado, and, and New York. And then we have the columns, uh, one, two, three, and four. So like a series, the access the access index have a map method. So we could see this uh, function define a function called transform and it, it sort of it takes the data frame and then uh, returns the first four elements uh, of the index to upper it converts them to upper so this is what it does this is what this transform uh, uh, function does so when we call data dot index dot map transform this is what we have for the index which actually we could see it's, it it has actually changed the 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 the, the data because yes, the data was this the original data was this this map method changes it to this so you can assign to the index attribute modifying the actual data just like I, I was mentioning so this mod modifies actual data so he's explaining that if we don't want to modify the actual data we could use the the the, the rename uh, method which creates like a copy of the original data and then we'll still have the original data in its uh, actual form. Yeah. So we could also add new, like new, uh, new, new columns if we want, by using the the data dot rename. And then we could instead of Ohio, we could rename it to Indiana, and we could rename three to Peekaboo and and, and stuff like this. Yeah, it, it 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 then goes on to talk about uh, this discretization and binning, like sort of sort of to continuous data is often discretized or uh, or like uh, otherwise separated into bins for analysis. Yeah, because sometimes we want to get put the data into some intervals, so putting it in uh, in a bin format will make the analysis uh, very straightforward and and easier. So it gives an example of age where when we have the range of ages from, we could see from 20 to like 65. So 20 is the lowest and 61 is the highest. So we could divide this age into 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 categories or like bins, let's say like into intervals. So we could say from 18 to 25, from 26 to 35 and so on and so forth. So we could call the pandas.cut method. If we call the, the pandas.cut method, so let's, First, we create the bin. Like we are saying from like 18 uh, to uh, 100. And then once we call the, the pandas.cut method, it uh, it creates the, 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 the bin for us or the interval. So we could see it's uh, from 18 to 25 and from, uh, from 25 to 35 and from 35 and, and so forth. So we, 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 we see. The interval 18, 25, 25, 35, 35, 
um, uh, 35, 60, and from 60 to, to 200. So the, 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 the pandas.cut method uh, is very useful for creating the, the, the intervals. So each bin is identified by, uh, uh, by a special unique, by a special interval uh, value type containing the lower and the upper limits of the, of the bin, of course. So this is like here, this is the, or the, the lower and this is the, the upper limit of the bin and, and, and stuff like this. So here, um, this uh, uh, brace, this, that, is it a, 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 a brace or what? Indicates that uh, 25 is inclusive, and this uh, is indicating that um, 18 is ex exclusive, something like this. So uh, we have another the the dot codes gives us gives us the codes like the like here 18 like it gives us the indexes like the 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 the, the Python coding which is like uh, 18, it's like because Python starts counting from zero. So the first interval, which is zero here, is from uh, 18 to 25. And the, the second interval, which is one, it's from 25 to 35. And the third interval, so uh, the, the dot codes gives us the, 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 like the, 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 the indexes or the counts. And then the dot categories gives us the various bins we have which is like from 18 to 25, from 25 to 35, 35, uh, and so forth. So if we say, okay, category is zero, it gives us this. If we say category one, it gives us this, and let's say category three gives us uh, this one. And then if we call the value count method, it gives us the frequencies of each of this, uh, of this, each of this uh, bins, yeah. So the, the dot counts, uh, the value counts gives us the, 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 the frequencies. It says that note that the, the PD uh, dot value count category are uh, the beans are the bean counts for the results. Yeah. So the yeah. So they basically they are the, the frequencies. So so or, or he's explaining the, the intervals. Uh, the parenthesis means that the side is uh, the side is open like exclusive, while the square bracket means it's uh, inclusive. Yeah, this the the square brackets, yeah. So this means uh, inclusive and this this is exclusive, something like this. This is what he's trying to explain. So we could change the, we could change this uh, setting, this uh, uh, inclusive and exclusive by saying right equals to false. If we do right, it changes, it reverses, and that is what it does here. It, it gives us the reverse. But normally we just want to stick with the default setting. Uh, we just want to stick with that. We could also uh, bypass the default uh, uh, interval being level, uh, yeah, so we could uh, bypass the default interval base being level, base being leveling by passing a list or array to the uh, labels option. So if we have something like this, we uh, group names. So youth is from like 18 to 25, uh, young, young adult from 25 to 35, middle age and, and stuff like this. So we could uh, call the, 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 the dot cut method and assign label to groups. And then now we'll have this. Instead of the giving us the actual interval values, we'll have this as the the, the levels, which which could which which could be more uh, uh, informative and it might be easier to know what this uh, beans uh, represent. So if we pass uh, an integer number of beans to Pandas dot cut instead of explicit bean edges, uh, it will compute it, it will compute uh, equal length bins based on the minimum and the max values in the in the data. So consider this case where we generate uh, uniform random numbers of uh, 
uh, size 20. So if we call the 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 the, the, the pandas dot cut method, and then for here we, we didn't specify any bin edges, but we just say you know just uh, divide this into four bins, and let's say the precision that is the the number of points at the decimal just make it two. So here what 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 uh, the, the the dot cut method does it will just divide the whole thing based on the minimum and the max. It will divide divide the whole thing into four equal uh, 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 sort of equal length bins. So like the interval between the bins, it will be it will make sure that they are equal and then divides the 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 whole data or the whole series into uh, into four categories of bins. So a closely related concept is the the, the dot uh, Q cut. Uh, so the dot Q cut method uses uh, a, 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 a quintile sample uses the, the sample quintile instead of instead of the cut method, which uh, um, which if you don't specify the bin edges, it will just look at the the minimum and the max, and then it uh, uh, calculates the equal interval for the, 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 the bins. But the if you call the the, the dot q cut, it uses the sample quintiles and then it makes sure that the the intervals sort of it makes sure that the data uh, the, it makes sure that the uh, sort of the, the bin size are equally are, are equal. Yeah so it makes sure that the bin size are equal. Yeah, so this could this is an example. Yeah, you could see the the so if we count, we could see the 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 the, 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 the counts each 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 of the bins had uh, uh equal size. The sizes of the bins are uh are the same. I'm not sure if I'm explaining this right. Maybe you might wanna add some. Something to this, if you, if you if you like. So he's saying that you could also pass your own uh, 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 similar to pandas dot cut. You can pass your own quintiles, which could be uh, a number between uh, zero and, and and one inclusive. So uh, example, if we pass our own uh, uh, quintile. This is very similar to the cut method where we uh, we pass our the we pass our own uh, sort of the, the bin edges we specify them. So in this case the uh, the, 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 the the bin sizes might not be equal. We we are seeing here the first one has like hundred and then the, the the they are all not equal, but some of the intervals or some of the bins are, are have equal 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 sizes. So he's like, we'll return to this uh, thing later. Yeah. So so now here he talks about how to deal with uh, uh, um, how to detect and filter out outliers because in our data we might have outliers that it like abnormal values. So we might have abnormal values in our data. And uh, if we keep them without, uh, if we keep them in our final analysis, they could uh, uh, results in um, in our results being skewed in certain direction because of those outliers. So we, want, we, we, we generally want to check for outliers and think of how to deal with them either let's say transform them or change them or you know remove them depending on the type of data we are working with. So suppose we generated this random standard normal of uh, like a, a thousand uh, entries for four columns and then we call it describe and then it gives us the overview like the frequency it's a thousand the mean we have a standard deviation the minimum the uh, the second quantile, the third, and and the max. Suppose you want to find values in one of the columns exceeding three in absolute 
in absolute terms, we could just do this. Let's say we are looking at the the, the third column, which is the two, data two. And then now we say, okay, this data two, check for uh, cases we are in the absolute value. Uh, it's uh, of the, the the entries is greater than three and gives us those, those, those rows. So we have at uh, row 41 and at row 136. Um, these are the two cases we are in. We have the absolute value of the the, the entry greater than three. So we could uh, generalize this to the entire data set and select all the cases. We can generalize this uh, condition and select all cases we are in. The, we are having value exceeding three or minus three. That is taking the absolute value of uh, uh, values that exceed, exceed three. And we call it alongside with the, the any method, or which uh, on, a, on a Boolean data, a data frame. So here is an example of the, we have the, the, the actual data. And then we call this condition, and then we apply it to the the any. Uh, so it is necessary to put this uh, in in parentheses because if we want to apply any method, we have to make sure that this is in parentheses. So we are saying now, in any of the columns where this condition is satisfied, give give us all the the, the entries where this condition is satisfied satisfied for all the for for all the columns. So these are the, 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 the values that satisfy that above condition. So yeah, it is in parentheses uh, uh, unnecessary in order to call the, the, the any method, like, like I mentioned. So, so basically he's trying to explain that we could use this uh, uh, type of uh, um, criteria or method to um, sort of to set values, to call for values that are outside this particular this condition, we could get those values that are um, uh, outside this condition. So here the statement np dot sign data produces uh, uh, a one and minus one values based on whether the value in data are positive or, or negative, something like this. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, this was the place I wanted to stop. Then hopefully next week I'll cover the remaining part of the chapter.